Hello, welcome back to the NPTEL online certification course on deep learning. So, for last uh, few lectures, we are discussing about the optimization procedures of gradient search uh, technique. And as you know that uh, gradient search itself is an uh, optimization algorithm or gradient descent is itself is an optimization algorithm which tries to minimize the error function by updating the weight vectors in deep neural network. But uh, this gradient descent algorithm faces uh, a kind of challenges like a vanishing gradient problem, then uh, slow learning rate. So, in order to solve these algorithms, there are different optimization techniques which have been suggested and the aim of such optimization techniques is to make the gradient descent algorithm or to learning algorithm make it faster, make it more efficient. So, in our previous class, we have talked about two such optimization algorithms. One of them was momentum optimizer and the other one was nested of accelerated gradient or NAG. In today's uh, lecture, we will try to discuss about what are the drawbacks of momentum optimizer as well as the drawbacks of nested of accelerated gradient techniques and we will see that how those drawbacks can overcome in other algorithms which have been suggested like Adagrad, RMS prop, there are other algorithms like Ada delta, uh, then Adam. So, we will discuss these algorithms one after another and we will try to see that uh, what is the relative performance of these algorithms when you come across different challenging error surfaces. So, before we go to Adagrad, let us uh, try to uh, see that uh, or try to recapitulate what we did in our previous class. So, in the previous class, we have talked about the momentum optimizer technique, which obviously an enhancement, which is an improvement over simple gradient descent algorithm. So, what is this momentum optimizer? You find what we said that if we have an error surface whose curvature or the rate of gradient in some dimension is very high, whereas in some other dimension the curvature is very low or in other sense that if I take the gradient in one dimension and the gradient in another dimension, in one of the dimension the gradient is very high, whereas in another dimension the gradient is very low. In such case, the gradient descent algorithm or the base gradient descent algorithm finds it difficult to navigate to the minimum error point. So, in momentum optimizer, that is what is being addressed. So, let us see what we discussed in previous class, the momentum optimizer. Let us have a quick uh, recapitulation of that. So, what you have in momentum optimizer is, uh, suppose I have initialized the weight vector somewhere over here. So, simple gradient descent algorithm, what it will do is, it will find out the gradient of the error at this initial position, let us call it the initial position w0 in the vertical direction or in the direction of w1 as well as in the direction of w2. And as you see over here, its gradient direction in the vertical direction will be very high, whereas So, you find that the gradient direction in the vertical direction will be very high, whereas the gradient direction in the horizontal direction will be very low. As a result, what will happen is the gradient descent algorithm will try to adjust or will try to update the weight vector in such a way that the weight vector moves in this direction, whereas you find that the minimum error is somewhere over here. So, we are going, uh, we are not moving in the right direction to minimize the error. In the same manner, in the next iteration, the weight vector will be moving in this direction, then the weight vector will be moving in this direction, 
then the weight vector will be moving in this direction and so on. So, as a result that you are find a, find a, you find that you are oscillating around the right path which should have been followed because over here it would have been correct to move in this direction not to oscillate like this. So, this is where the momentum comes to uh, the rescue. So, in case of momentum what you do is you again find out the gradient at this location. So, this is my position w 0 at time 0 and suppose at time w 1 uh, the weight vector has come somewhere over here. So, this was the movement at time w t minus 1 suppose the weight vector has come somewhere over here. So, this is what I have w t minus 1 and while coming over here the previous shift or the previous update was in this direction. So, what momentum does is now momentum computes two terms one is its movement or update due to the momentum because of the previous movement and the gradient at location w t minus 1. So, if you do that you find that the momentum as before will be somewhere over here suppose the previous upgrade value was v t minus 1. So, under the influence of this momentum now this update direction will be say gamma v t minus 1 that is what is the gradient component. And coming to uh, this is what is the momentum component and coming to the gradient component the gradient will be somewhere in this direction. So, because of this under the influence of these two the gradient and uh, the momentum the net displacement or the net updation of the weight vector will be in this direction which is actually the sum of the momentum term and the gradient term. And this is what is your v t and under influence of this your weight vector is moving over here which is w t. So, you find that in absence of the momentum term the weight was moving in this direction whereas, with momentum the weight is moving in this direction. So, it has shifted slightly towards uh, the minimum value. So, this is the advantage of momentum optimizer. Now, coming to So, under the influence of this if I simply have the stochastic gradient descent uh, optimization algorithm a pure stochastic gradient descent gives you the updates which is as given over here whereas, if I have the stochastic gradient with momentum the update moves will be something like this. So, you find that this momentum term actually is improving the uh, learning rate or the algorithm will learn faster and will move towards the minimum error value for in a faster way. Now, once we have this momentum then what Nesterov gradient accelerated gradient does is it computes the gradient not at the location of w t, but or at location w t minus 1, but at location t w t minus 1 based on the momentum it tries to find out what will be its future, future position or it tries to look ahead and at that future location it computes the gradient value. So, the operation is something like this say for example, if we are at this location at say time w t minus 1. say at time w t minus 1 this was the position of the weight vector and to come to this position it had made the previous update as v t minus 1. So, under the influence of momentum now the movement or the future position which can be computed is say somewhere over here.
this will be say gamma times v t minus 1 and only under the influence of this uh, momentum the position of the weight vector at time t will be over here which is w t. So, if I simply use the momentum with gradient, uh, gradient descent with momentum, what will be computed is the gradient term will be computed over here and the sum of these two would have been the update in the weight vector. But in instead of accelerated gradient descent, instead of computing the gradient term here, the gradient term is computed over here and your movement or the update is in the direction of gradient at this location. So, you find that when you add the, uh, when you have the look ahead gradient as in the accelerated gradient uh, algorithm, you are moving faster to your uh, minimum error position. So, now if I illustrate on this diagram, suppose your position at time w t minus 1 over here. So, this was w t minus 1 and this was your the momentum term which is gamma v t minus 1. Then you are computing the gradient at this location. So, you are moving faster towards the minimum error value. In the previous case, if you, if you do not use this accelerated gradient, the gradient would have been computed over here and the movement would have gone in this particular direction and that is how the weight would have been updated. So, this nested of accelerated gradient further improves the momentum optimization. However, both of these momentum optimizer and energy optimizer suffers from certain problem. So, what are the problems? The problems are in case of both the algorithms, we require the hyperparameters and these hyperparameters are to be set manually. So, what are these hyperparameters? Let us uh, try to see that what these hyperparameters are. In case of momentum optimization, how we have uh, optimized uh, the weight, your w t plus 1 or let me put it as w t, w t was w t minus 1 plus we had the momentum term, momentum term was gamma v t minus 1 minus we had this gradient term which is some eta times gradient of my loss function L where the gradient is computed with respect to weight w and it is computed at location at w t minus 1. So, I have two hyperparameters one is this gamma and the other one is eta. So, these two hyperparameters are to be set, set manually in case of momentum optimizer. And what do you get in case of nested of gradient descent? In case of nested of gradient descent, the w t minus or w t gets w t minus 1 plus we have the same momentum term gamma times v t minus 1 minus now you take the gradient, but the gradient not at location w t minus 1, but you are taking gradient at w t minus 1 plus gamma times v t minus 1 and I have the rate of convergence which is eta. So, here again I have these two hyperparameters which are to be set manually. So, this is one of the drawbacks of uh, both the momentum uh, optimizer as well as nested of accelerated gradient uh, algorithm. The 
these hyperparameters actually decide what is your learning rate. If the hyperparameters are too high, the learning rate will be fast and if the hyperparameters are too low, the learning rate will be slow. Uh, and it is the same learning rate both in case of momentum as well as in case of nested of accelerated gradient it is the same learning rate which is used in all the dimensions. But in actual scenario in high dimensional non-convex nature of loss function it is quite possible that your loss function will be more sensitive in certain direction and it will not be so sensitive in some other dimension or the gradient in some dimension will be quite high and the gradient in some other dimension may, may be very low. So, as a result your algorithm may require that learning rate be small in the direction of higher gradient and it may be high in the direction of lower gradient. So, these are the different problems of uh, momentum as well as nested of accelerated gradient technique. And such problems are actually addressed in another algorithm which is known as ADAGRAD. So, what is this ADAGRAD algorithm? The ADAGRAD algorithm it tries to adaptively scale the learning rate in different dimensions. So, now the learning rate is not same in all the dimensions the learning rate in the dimension say in the direction in the dimension of W1 we have seen earlier that in the vertical direction the gradient was very high when we were, when we were explaining the momentum optimizer technique. We had seen that the gradient in the vertical direction is very high and the gradient in the horizontal direction was very low. As a result your learning rate in the vertical direction was high and the learning rate in the horizontal direction was low. And that is the reason when you update the weight vectors this updation technique was uh, I mean the updated weight vectors was actually oscillating around the correct path that should have been taken. So, in case of ADAGRAD it can adaptively, the, uh, adaptively tune the learning rate in different directions. So, in the vertical direction it will try to reduce the learning rate whereas, in the horizontal uh, in the horizontal direction it will try to enhance the learning rate. And uh, the scale parameter or the scale factor to scale the learning rates in different dimensions they are actually proportional to the square root of sum of historical squared values of the gradient. We will come to see come, th uh, come to this when we explain this algorithm with the help of what are the mathematical equations that we have. And as a result the parameters which have the largest partial derivative because it is being scaled with the sum of squares of historical gradient values. So, the parameters that have very large partial derivatives of the loss function along those directions the learning rate will decrease rapidly and the parameters with small partial derivatives along those directions the learning rate uh, uh, will uh, uh, the rate of decrease of learning rate will be very small. So, that is how adaptively the ADA grad algorithm can scale the learning rate in different dimensions. So, let us see what this ADA grad algorithm is. So, again in ADA grad algorithm you have to compute the gradient at location W t where x is your input vector. And because we are talking about the batch gradient descent uh, algorithm, we are trying to improvise upon batch gradient descent algorithm. So, whatever we are computing all these computations we are with respect to the batch of training samples that you have. So, if I have say n number of samples in a mini batch used for training the neural network, the deep neural network the gradient at time instant t when my weight vector is at w t. So, I have to compute what is the loss and I have to take the gradient of this loss with respect to weight vector and this gradient has to be computed over all the training samples in the mini batch and you have to take the average of those gradients which are computed over all the training samples with respect to the weight at time w t. Okay. 
So, this is the gradient you are computing and this gradient is a g t, whereas I said that g t is computed over the mini batch at time instant t or with weight vectors as w t. And then you compute the square of the different components of this gradient and then you sum them up and this summation has to be done over tau is equal to 1 to the current time instant which is t. This particular computation, so g tau is indicates for the variable t, the subscript t has been replaced by tau indicating that it is my index over which the summation has to be computed. And this particular notation g t then this small g tau and uh, then this small uh, circle over here. this small circle indicates the component wise multiplication or in other words what I mean by that is uh, say if I have two vectors a and vector b where vector a has components say a 1, a 2 up to say a d these are the components and vector b also has components say b 1, b 2 up to say b d where d is the dimensionality of the vectors, then this operation component wise multiplication it is nothing but a 1, b 1, a 2, b 2, a d, b d. So, this is what this notation indicates. So, given this now let us go back. So, this r t it actually accumulates the sum of the squares of component wise uh, um, uh, multiplications of the products and it is accumulated over time starting from t equal to 0 to t equal to t. And when you are updating the weight vector, your updation equation is w t plus 1 is equal to w t minus eta times g t upon epsilon i plus r t. So, this i is a vector where all the components of the vector is equal to 1 and this r t is the vector which is given by this. So, again when I am in showing this particular expression that square root of sigma uh, square root of epsilon i plus r t this actually means square root of epsilon plus r 1 for t equal to 1 it means square root of epsilon plus r 2 and so on. So, going by this your actual updation when I expand this equation the actual updation equation is given by this. So, you find that w 1 is actually being updated uh, w t plus 1 1 is actually updated as w t 1 minus eta by epsilon plus r t 1 square root of that times g t 1. So, it is only the first component of your uh, weight vector which is being updated and the scale fa factor of the learning rate or the first component of the squared sum of the gradients is being scaled by square root of epsilon plus r t 1, okay, where this r t 1 is the sum of squares of the gradients and you take the first component of it. So, your gradient of uh, uh, the gradient of the first component is actually scaled by epsilon plus sum of the squares of the gradients of the first component and you take the square root of this. So, similarly if I go for updation of the ith component say w t plus 1 i. So, if I write it this way w t plus 1 i the ith component this will be updated as, as w t ith component minus epsilon eta by square root of 
epsilon plus r t i times g t i. So, you are scaling by epsilon plus r t i, where r t i is nothing but sum of squares of the ith component and you are taking the sum starting from the beginning. So, this is actually the cumulative square and that is how you find that every update component, every component, uh, every update component is being scaled by the square root of sum of squares of the corresponding gradient value. And the purpose of epsilon, putting epsilon is, epsilon is a very small positive uh, number, positive quantity. So, this epsilon is put for stability of the division that in case your sum of squares of the gradient values become 0, I do not face a situation of division by 0. So, this is the purpose that you are putting the epsilon. So, this is what is your ADA grad algorithm. So, as we have said before that this ADA grad algorithm has got certain positive points that ADA grad is trying to adaptively scale the learning rate of different dimensions by normalizing with respect to the gradient magnitude in the corresponding dimension or square root of the sum of squares of the gradient values in the corresponding dimension. And uh, the eta that you have put in the expression, this eta is actually the initial uh, learning rate and I do not need to tune it manually. And uh, this makes your learning faster because always the ADA grad is trying to push the updates in the right direction, in the direction of the minimum error value. And as a result, the ADA grad, uh, the ADA grad algorithm converges very rapidly when your error function is actually a convex function. But ADA grad also has certain negative point that is if the function is non-convex, then the trajectory may pass through many complex terrains and eventually it may find uh, a locally convex region. And what we try to do is and what should be our aim is that once you get a locally convex region, the ADA grad algorithm or your uh, learning alg algorithm should quickly converge at the minimum of that uh, local convex region. But the problem is uh, because in case of ADA grad algorithm, your scale factor is the accumulation of the squares of the gradients and because the square of the gradient is always a positive term. So, as t increases or the number of iterations increases, your scale factor goes on increasing. And because it is goes on, it goes on increasing monotonically. So, as t becomes large, your scaling factor that is 1 upon square root of epsilon plus r t, that term may be almost 0. It may be very, very small. And when it becomes very small, your training or the learning rate becomes almost 0. It is very small or vanishes. So, by the time ADA grad algorithm comes to that local convex, the learning rate may be very, very slow and as a result, your overall learning of the convergence may take large time. So, at that point, your model may eventually stop learning. So, this is a problem of ADA grad algorithm, though it has many positive uh, points. So, in our next lecture, we will try to see other algorithms and we will say, we will try to analyze that how the problem being faced by the ADA grad algorithm can be addressed in those algorithms. Thank you.